This is 1944 P. Jefferson Nickel struck on a scent planchet. Graded in mint state 60 brown by PCGS. According to Stax Powers, brassy reddish copper patina suggests that the scent planchet is one of those made from copper salvaged from cartridge cases used in World War II. Nicely centered in strike with otherwise bold definition, the peripheral devices are partially or wholly off the flan due to the error. It was sold for $7,475. Number 5. Here is 1965 Roosevelt Dime struck on a 90% silver planchet. Graded as AU55 by NGC. This is one of the most popular wrong planchet errors in today's market, a transitional one that involves a 90% planchet that the mint ceased using for regular issue dime production in 1964 with 1965 dated dies from the first year of regular issue copper nickel clad coinage. Otherwise properly struck. Although accuracy does compel us to mention trivial softness of detail along the left obverse and upper reverse borders. Boldly to sharply defined elsewhere with bright brilliant white surfaces that retain appreciable mint luster. It ended up selling for $7,800. Number 4. This is 1965 Washington Quarter struck on a silver quarter planchet. Graded as extremely fine 45 by PCGS. Always popular as a transitional year, a leftover silver planchet from 1964 apparently was stuck in a supposedly empty tote bin, then jarred loose in 65 and struck. Moderate circulation is evident over the high points, and there are no detracting marks. A rare and very desirable off-metal error coin. It was sold for $7,500. Number 3. This is 2000 Lincoln cent overstruck on a 2000 dated Sacagawea dollar. This is a fascinating example of a remarkable double denomination coin. The first strike was normal, resulting in a Sacagawea dollar that is well centered and fully impressed on the correct planchet. The final digit zero in the date of the dollar is discernible, confirming that it was struck from 2000 dated dies. As the Lincoln cent bears no mint mark, both strikes are presumably attributed to the Philadelphia mint. Remarkably, this Sacagawea dollar then ended up between cent dies, where it received sharp impressions of both the obverse and reverse. Apparently this second impression was made in the absence of a collar or, the dollar planchet prevented the collar from deploying around the anvil die in the normal manner. The Lincoln cent strike is at 530 relative to the Sacagawea dollar obverse, and all design elements that are present from both impressions are razor sharp. It was sold for $38,400. Number 2. This is 2000 piece Akajawea dollar struck on a cent planchet in MS67 red condition. The dollar strike is flush with the upper obverse and lower reverse borders, and all major design elements are at least partially discernible except for the legend United States of America on the reverse, which is mostly off the planchet. Satiny bright pinkish red surfaces with razor sharp detail to all features that are present. While we have handled a few Akajawea dollars struck on quarter planchets, or overstruck on state quarters, it was sold for $22,800. Number 1. And this is 1970's Washington Quarter Proof struck on 1898 Half Eagle. Graded as PR66 by NGC. This is a spectacular error. A struck 1898 $5 was used as a planchet and then overstruck with proof 1970's quarter dies. Parts of the 1898 Half Eagle are faintly visible on each side with the date, 1898 seen below the wreath on the reverse. Proof planchets are hand-fed into the press prior to striking. Each proof coin is, allegedly, individually examined prior to shipment. It is rare to locate any proof coin with even a minor error, such as an off-center, double-struck, a broad strike, and off-metal strikes. Obviously, such proof coin errors are eagerly sought by collectors. What makes this coin physically possible to produce is the relative closeness in diameter of each denomination. Quarters are 24.3 mm in diameter, and half eagles are 21.6 mm. Meaning the struck half eagle coin will not be quite large enough to be a perfect fit as a planchet, however, it is close and the result will be what we see on this piece, incomplete definition around the borders. It was sold for $93,000. Thanks for watching this video. Consider subscribing to our channel for more captivating numismatic content. Have a good one.